Okay, so now we're going to go over uh, finding percentiles and given a certain data value, computing what percentile it represents. So first, uh, this example, consider the data set below and find both the 20th and the 65th percentiles. So again, it's the same set of numbers we had before, and we begin by sorting and listing the data vertically. Kind of always the first step. Then, you know, what is the kth percentile of a data set? The kth percentile of a data set is the value, we write it p sub k, so the p is big, the k is a subscript, where k percent of the data values are smaller than it. P, k, p sub k may or may not be one of the data values itself. So we have a formula to find it. Um, the formula is, what we do is we look for the location of the data value. So the location is given by the formula k over 100 times n plus 1, where k is the value of the percentile, the percentile that we're looking for, and n is the number of data values that we have in our set. So if that location is a whole number, then the value in that location is the desired percentile. And if that location is not a whole number, then the percentile we're looking for is the mean of the two data values on either side of that number. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So um, my picture out of the way. OK. So back to our example, we're looking for the 20th percentile of the data set. So the 20th percentile of this data set would be the value where 20% of the data lies below it or is smaller than it. And again, we're going to use the same formula to find the location, k over 100 times n plus 1. And in this case, k is 20 and n is 15. So we get 20 over 100 times 15 plus 1 or 0.2 times 16, which is 3.2. And this is where we pause and we say, okay, so it's a whole number. 3.2 is not a whole number. If it was, suppose we just got three, then if it were just three, the answer would be six because that's the third data value. But 3.2 is not a whole number, so we're gonna look to go between the third and the fourth data values. So when it's not a whole number, we take the average of the two data values around it. That would be the third and the fourth data values or in this case, six and nine, six plus nine, 15 divided by two, the 20th percentile is 7.5. This means that 20% of the data lies below 7.5. Okay, and then part two, looking for the 65th percentile. The 65th percentile will be the value where 65% of the data lies below it or smaller is smaller than it. And again, it's the same formula. The location is given by k over 100 uh, times n plus 1. And now again, k is 65 and n is 15. So 0.65 times 16 is 10.4. Um, sorry, again, that's not a whole number. So <clears throat> we take, if it was a whole number, so it's 10, so count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nine. The tenth data element is 14. The eleventh one is 18. So we take the average of the tenth and the eleventh data values. 14 plus 18 divided by 2. That's And make sure you put those uh, things on top in parentheses. You need to add those before you divide by 2. Um, if I was just plugging this into a calculator, I might, if I didn't have the parentheses, that'd be 14 plus 9, which would be 23, which would be too big. So 14 plus 18. 32 divided by 2 is 16. So the 65th percentile is 16. And again, you know, if this were just a 10, a whole number, then we would stop at that 10th data value, and that would be the percentile we were looking for. I'm not going to do that example, but you'll see one in the PowerPoint presentation. If you wanted to switch this problem around and go the other way, you would ask, um, what percentile does a particular data value represent? Or in this case, we would say, you know, what percentile does the data value of 21 down here represent? And then I could ask the same thing about the data value 14. Um, and you notice the difference that 21 only occurs once, 
whereas 14 occurs three times. And that is going to change the value of how we find what, what percentile it represents. So to find a percentile represented by a particular data value, we are looking for what percent of the data is smaller than that value. So we take um, a formula, again, this is given in our book. Um, K, the percentile that we're looking for, is equal to x plus 0.5y divided by n, all of that times 100, where x is the total number of values less than the given data value, y is the total number of copies of the given data value, and n is the total number of data values. And I guess for x and y, we could get rid of this word total. x is the number of values less than the given data value, y is the number of copies of the given data value, and n is the total number of data values. So in our example, the percentile that the data value 21 represents, again, our data is sorted and listed vertically. And I need to figure out, to use this formula, what x, y, and n are. So x, the number of values smaller than 21, is 12. We just count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Y, we only have one copy of 21. So Y is just one. And the number of values that we have is 15 again. So K is, using this formula, 12 plus 0 0.5 times one. Add them up, that's 12.5 divided by 15, and then multiply that total by 100. Uh, that's gonna be 83.33333, but I'm gonna round it to the nearest whole number. And so that data value of 21 is the 83rd percentile, or P83 equals 21. Doing this for the data value of 14, what's going to change is that 14 occurs three times. So in the formula, the value for y is not 1. I'll look at that. Find the percentile that data value 14 represents. Again, it's the same formula, k x plus 0.5y divided by n, all times 100. And then x, the number of values smaller than 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. y, the number of copies of 14, there are three of them. And n again is 15. So plugging that into the formula, K is equal to 7 plus 0 0.5 times 3, that's 8.5, divided by 15, all times 100. Just plug that into my calculator or Excel. Round it to the nearest whole number, we get 57. So 14 is the 57th percentile, or P sub 57 equals 14. Now, you know, percentiles are not an exact science, and you know, we know 14 is our median, so in a sense, we, we called it our 50th percentile, and it is. And it's also the 57th percentile. Um, this is because our data set is relatively small. We only have 15 values. And so, you know, the, the method by which we calculate percentiles can give us different results. So um, Excel has percentile functions. Um, there's an exclusive and an inclusive percentile function that depends on whether or not we want to include the value. Um, I think we would be using the exclusive one, but I would suggest we just do percentiles by hand. Um, if later when you have really large sets of data and you need to find percentiles, you could use Excel to find those formulas. Um, the same thing would be true, you know, really for the quartiles as well, that um, when we're using some technology to find quartiles, they may change slightly from what we would do by hand. And again, that has to do with whether or not we're including the median in that portion of the quartile. Okay, so just something to be aware of. We are gonna use these two formulas, um, the one giving you the percentile K when you're trying to go backwards, X plus half of Y over N times 100. The other um, for the location K over 100 times N plus one. Okay, and that does it for percentiles.